Catherine Thomas. Welcome to Kingdom View. You know the world has its view, but God has his view. The title of the topic today is The Trap of Offense. And I say trap of offense because we know that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he also comes with his traps to, um, so that you can be offended. He takes, he uses, in other words, he uses the offense. And it might be him working through someone else if you get offended. That's right. But I want to let you know that offense is a tool of the devil to bring people into captivity, to keep us in bondage. And so Paul instructed Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 24 to 26, he said this, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. And that's a good way to put it, being taken captive by Satan to do his will. So we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about how can we get past offense and get on with the process of healing in the church. So do you all agree that we need healing in the church? Yes. yes. From, yes. And when we say church, we're not talking about just your church building. We're talking about the kingdom. This is the kingdom Amen. view. And we need healing yeah, right. in the kingdom. In, in the scripture that I just read, Paul, he was letting Timothy know. He said, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach patience in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. But the problem is, people do not want to be corrected. True, true, amen. You know, in, amen. in the kingdom, we, we're gonna to have to be corrected sometime. I'm an apostle, I have to get corrected sometime. And so when correction comes, we need to learn how to receive the correction, receive the instruction, and not be offended. Amen, amen. I'm gonna start with uh, Apostle Darling. And what do you have to say on that? Apostle Catherine, and to our viewers, we must be careful of the spirit of offense. Because in my humble opinion, I believe the devil sets that spirit loose in the church Amen. or yeah. in the kingdom. Amen. Yeah. Because the spirit of offense can abort our destiny. Yes. That's right. That's right. For example, if God plants you, there's a scripture that says, bloom where you are planted. Yes, yes. The yes. spirit of offense does not want you to bloom where you are planted. Right. The spirit of offense wants to wants you to be offended and so you can church hop mm -hmm. and jump from place All to right place. Now. Yes. And you can never bloom. For yes. example, if you plant uh, a flower and you keep digging it up mm -hmm. and replanting it over here, no, I yes. don't like the way it look over here. Yes. You yes. dig it up and then you go plant it over here. No, I don't like the way they're doing it over here. Let me pull it up. Yes. The plant is never going to bloom. Never. And so when God plants us in a place, yes. the first thing you need to do is look out for the spirit of offense. Yes. Because that spirit wants you to leave Yes. from where God has planted you, interrupt your destiny, and have you hopping here, there, and everywhere. Yes. And you cannot be developed spiritually to reach and do what God has called you to do. Amen. So don't let the spirit of offense fool you. Right. As Apostle Catherine said, accept correction. That's right. Accept Amen. correction. Don't take it, always take it personal Amen. and say, I'm leaving. Yes. No, stay and take your medicine. That's right. So you can grow That's in right. the things of God and you can be 
who God has called you to be. Amen. 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 I That's agree beautiful. with that. And offense is like a weapon. Once you pull the trigger, it keeps on firing. Mm -hmm. It just keeps firing. Keeps firing. Wow. Keeps firing. And the thing about it, I, I like what Apostle said when she said, you know, when you get offended, don't leave the church because you're offended. Sometimes you just need to go to the pastor and talk and you know, clear the air, find out. You may be thinking one thing and the pastor is doing something else. Or the pastor may be doing something and you think he's something else. So in other words, you need to come together and be on one accord. And unless properly identified um, and repented, and you repent and, and the change comes forth, the spirit of offense will continue to cause chaos, that's right. And yes. destroy relationships. Amen. Yes. And the spirit of offense has infiltrated our churches. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And causes division, dissension, strife, hurt, and pain. Mm -hmm. So as offense inf infiltrates our churches and annihilates the peace and unity, what can we do as Christians to root that out? What can we do? And I'm going to start with you, Evangelist, on that. What can what we, we do? can do to root it out is we need to strengthen our relationship, mm -hmm. our right. personal relationship right. with the Lord. That's right. And we need to really stay before Him Amen. in prayer. Amen. And we need, when we see, and if, 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 when we go to that place of, of offense, because they're going to be there. Yes. They're going to come. The Bible mm -hmm. said they would. Yes. But if you are in a peaceful place and resting in the Lord, like you're supposed to be according to the scriptures, right? yes. then you will look at it for what it really is and That's who it right. really came from. That's right. That's right. That's right. Didn't come, it might have came from the individual that you're looking at, mm -hmm. but that the spirit of it is orchestrated by the devil. That's oh, right. That's right. And he's going to make sure that if he knows that that's your a weakness for you, mm -hmm. he's going to make sure he looks for that area to penetrate. Oh, yes. Right. Yes. So you can be uprooted mm -hmm. that's right. and leave that's before right. your time. That's, that's right. Because many have left before their time. That's, that's right. right. Because mm -hmm. they got offended. And I like to do plants. And I thought about what you said, Apostle Dowling. When you keep pulling up a root, from the, the from where you first planted it at, the roots get weaker and weaker and weaker. Every time. Yes. Yes. So you can try to plant it somewhere else if you want to, but it's not going to grow the way God ordained and wants it to grow and flourish. Because certain water is not for everybody. Go ahead. Go Amen. ahead. Amen. Go. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're talking about the trap of offense today. And we must self-examine, searching within ourselves to see when and if offense arises. Mm -hmm. So if a person easily shuts down when people speak truth into their lives or makes a suggestion and they automatically think the other person is wrong, this could be offense. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You want to speak on that, prophetess? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, if you look at it, if that person says something to you that's not right, and it might, they might not realize that there's the way they're saying it to you. It might be in a rough tone. Mm -hmm. It might be quickening. You you know, and if that individual might get offended. Amen. Mm -hmm. So in order for that individual to come from where they are, all they have to do is go to God and say, God, help me. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Help me in that area that I keep getting it in. Yes, yes. Help me to strengthen that area. Yes. And to grow forward. Yes. Amen. Amen. Like you. you do not want to be caught in a trap of offense. Mm -hmm. And it is at the least a crucial warning to self-evaluate and try to discover why the person so quickly withdrew from the correction or suggestion given. And often their thoughts will lead to, they are out to get me. And thoughts like those lead to an unhealthy and unproductive road of emotional turmoil. Mm -hmm. Offense is a deadly weapon 
that kills relationships and builds up bitterness. Yes. Offense is tied to pride and control. Okay, so those three, offense, pride, and control, in operation together are a deadly trio. Mm, yeah. A deadly trio. Yeah, Amen. And, I, and I want to point out that you're not just, uh, when you leave because you're offended, you're hurt, and the other person gets hurt too. Because if a person really loves you, they are not trying to offend you. And if you leave and are offended, that person is going to be hurt because they understand that you are under control of a spirit. And it's a spirit of deception. Mm -hmm. That's right. It sure is. They understand that. And you don't realize you're deceived because you are deceived. Right. Amen. And often, you know, pastors, they want to reach out to you, but when you have a hardened heart mm -hmm. and you refuse to receive correction, then you also re refuse the love. Sure do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anyone else want to comment on the trap of offense? I like what you said about correction, Pastor. When you are in a ministry or you come to a, a ministry to learn, first of all, when you come to learn, you are not going to, when you determine to get what God got for you, mm -hmm. when those traps are set up for you and you are corrected because you may, there may be things that you don't understand right. and you begin to walk in air. Right. Right. And I would rather to be corrected than to, to fall over into the ditch right. and the enemy just stomp all over me. Yes, yes. And that's the plan, that's the trap right that's there. Right. Because he, so he wants to keep, instead of uh, him being under our feet, he wants us to be up under his feet. All right. Yeah. So the trap is, is to get you up under his feet mm -hmm. so he can trample out your vision, yes. trample out your purpose, yes. trample out your destiny, yes. and trample out your life. That's, That's right. right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's the trap. But mm -hmm. if you stay in a place that you want to be corrected, you know, when that correction comes and... Receive it. Receive it. Amen. Because many, many pastors, many apostles, many teachers, when they when they look at you, they're looking straight through you. Right. And they can see the things that God is showing them right. that needs to be corrected so now. you can grow. Right. It's right. all about the growth. Mm -hmm. It's not about a personal thing. Picking on me, don't mm -hmm. love me, treat everybody else a different way. When you there for the right reasons, it don't even matter. That's right. Because you're going to get what God got for you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. That oh, was so I, I want to add to that um, the spirit of offense in the church. I want to assign leaders in the church to safeguard yeah. For that spirit and yes. be on the lookout. Yes. yes. Because the, the pastor can't see everything. Come on, come on. But if but if there are leaders in place yes. that knows that that spirit is coming, yes. when it appears, they can go to that person and say, you know, this is not really the way it is. Let me help you. Yes. With this. Right. Yes. 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 You we, we as individuals, we're looking at the slice of the pie, one slice yes. of the pie, but the pastor has to look at the whole oh, yes. pie. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the slice that we are looking at may not be in agreement That's with right. the whole pie. So true. Right. But so there's right. no reason for you to leave. So yes. true. There's no, and, and as leaders, we are mature, yes. and we can help the vision yes. by dealing with that spirit because yes. we recognize it Tell when us. it shows up mm -hmm. because we know what it is and we know who it is yeah. and we know where it came from. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 Because Satan wants to abort your destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, as I said, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. So, that's you know, right. we, we walk around and a lot of times as Christians, you know, we boast about the fact that, you know, we're not smoking, we're not drinking, we're not lying, we're not doing the things that are so obvious as sin. Not committing 
fornication, not committing adultery, but at the same time, the devil knows what's going to move you. Sure does. So he's not going to come to you in those areas. But what he will do is come to you with an offense. Mm -hmm. That's right. You have someone offended. Do you not know that some people are planted it in the body has. of Christ absolutely. to offend you? Yes. That's their purpose. Absolutely. That's their purpose. Yeah. They come to offend you. But that's why the Bible said we're not supposed to be easily offended. I'm not saying that you'll never be offended. But easily offended means you're wearing your feelings on your, on your sleeve. Mm -hmm. The least little thing, you get offended. Mm -hmm. So you can't grow that way. No, you can't. You can't, you can't grow, can't. and it's about spiritual growth. It's yes, not it about is. being a professional church goer. You want to be a Christian, right. not a church, just a church goer. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's just really self-examine ourselves mm -hmm. and find out why we are being easily offended. That's right. Amen. 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 I'm going to read a little more. Uh, talked about the um, deadly trio. Offense is tied to pride and control. Mm -hmm. So people manifesting this trio seldom experience deliverance without spending a serious amount of time casting down their flesh, allowing God to divinely intervene and receiving correction and insight from those with prophetic wisdom. Yeah. Offense is difficult to identify within because pride will keep us from exposing the offense in our own lives. Pride tells us that we are always right and cannot have offense in our lives. Could never, could never happen. But it can happen. Yes, but yes. what we want to, to uh, know today is that if it does happen, then there's something that you can't do about it. Uh, offense can be removed from us. And, you know, sometimes it might take uh, someone praying for you and it has to be cast out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like when in, in the Bible where Jesus, it said Jesus taught them and the spirits were cast down. That's right. Sometimes That's right. you can come and you sit up under the word, and if you receive it, open your heart and receive, then the, the offense spirit will leave you just by you getting the word and applying it to your life. Absolutely. Amen. 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 So, um, I want to identify uh, the characteristics of offense, was number one. The, the person with offense feels they are owed something. They value what they have in themselves and feel they have worked hard and they deserve to be elevated. But the truth is, they felt they deserved something they weren't entitled to. Mm -hmm. Entitled people feel it is their duty and responsibility even though it is not. When they feel entitled to a position or a thing and don't receive it, they get offended and rejected. Who wants to speak on that one? Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You and know. That, and that is so true in the church. We have people waiting in line for position on, that they think they deserve yes. to have. Yes. And when the position goes someplace else, they are angry yes. and they feel like, like they've been mistreated and they are leaving. Yes instead of waiting on God. That's yes. right. Yes. yes. Because if you didn't receive that position, then maybe God has something better for you. That's yes. right. Yes. Don't let the spirit of offense cause you to leave your place. Yes. That's right. And go someplace else. Because let me just tell you, the spirit of offense knows that everywhere you go, you got to start all over again. <laughs> yes. So you keep yes. going and starting yes. over and starting yes. over. And, over. And, over. and listen, yes. I had to learn that. Me too. Me too. As, as, a, as a new Christian, I had to learn that. 
because I had a zealousness without wisdom. Yes, that's right. Yes. But finally, I got it. Amen. And I said, I'm not moving again. All right. Amen. Until God tells me to move. Amen. Until God releases me. Hallelujah. So we're not supposed to be going anywhere unless we get a release from God. That's right. And let me just add, your leader will know when it's time for you to go. Yes. That's right. Amen. Okay. So don't go to them telling them that the Lord has spoke to you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and it's time for you to shift. It's just out of order. <laughs> and you're not being fed. Come on. <laughs> and, I, and I'm just thinking from um, an apostle that is, a, I'm also a senior pastor. Um, when you come to a leader, and you've been under that leader for eight, ten, you've been with them for a while, him or her, and you can hear from God, but the leader can't hear from God. So you got to tell the leader. Yeah. Something, so, wrong with something that. is wrong with that. Yeah. And how can, the Bible says that pastors, shepherds are to watch over your soul. Mm -hmm. So if I'm watching over your soul, how can I not know when it's time for you to be elevated? I mean, God is showing me you. I'm praying for you and yes. fasting. And, and then all of a sudden, you come to me and tell me. It's time for me to go. <laughs> now, it might very well, I'm not saying, now understand what I'm saying. I am not saying that you should get in a church, because it's not, it's not about getting in a church, being in a ch church for the rest of your life. God can send you to a church for a season. That's right. And you will That's, know yeah. that. I'm not speaking to those people. Yes. I'm speaking to the ones, God does things decent and in order. Yeah, that's right. So if you've been with me from eight to ten years, and then all of a sudden God told you it's time for you to go, where did he tell you to go? I don't know yet. <laughs> and where are you going? I don't know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, maybe that's why God didn't tell me, because you don't even know where you're going, and I know that my God doesn't do things, you know. Uh, he's not. He doesn't have. He's not the author of confusion. That's right. That's right. That's God right. will. Now there are. On the other hand, I have had leaders to lead mm -hmm. in the right way, in the proper way, and the destination was already there when they got there, and they left with my blessing. Mm -hmm. that's and I'm right. sure that's that right. uh, Apostle Dowling has been a pastor too for 19 years. She has passed in 19 years, so I'm sure that that has happened to you. Absolutely. Amen. All right. So we're simply saying today that just wait on the Lord. Yes. Right. And do right. not yes. get trapped by the spirit of offense. Amen. Amen. So Amen. the next characteristic um, of offense is as we were as we have been talking about pride. Yeah. Okay. Prideful people are self reliant instead of God reliant. When pride attacks, it doesn't allow us to see the entire picture. Lucifer was prideful and it resulted in his fall. When people are offended, the offense is rooted in pride. Yes, yes. Pride yes. makes us fall. However, with offense, people don't see the fall as a result of their own doing. But they put the blame on others. Some people cannot handle the thought of being wrong. And then they feel shameful and unworthy. When a person offers direction or correction to a prideful, offensive person, often it is interpreted as, I can't do anything right, or I messed up again. You know what that reminds me of? You know how your jury is in the jury box and you just Come take on, it off and just throw it up in there and it gets all tangled yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. That's what that pride is all about. That's it's right. It's tangled up. That's right. And it can't get them loose. That's right. So when it go this way, it don't get an answer. Go this way, don't get an answer. Right. So I guess I'll stand in the middle and just say I can't do nothing right. Right. Can't do nothing right. Nothing right. And that's the enemy because he's the accuser of the brethren. So he tells you you can't do nothing right. You dead. You just, you're a failure, you know. And these thoughts, the Bible says, cast down every imagination 
every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bring every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. But these thoughts come in and they start telling you, you know, she doesn't like you anyway. You know, he doesn't like you anyway. She's talking about you in the pulpit. He's talking about you in the pulpit. Yeah. And these are, and I'm not saying that some people do not do this. Because I know, you know, there's evil in the pulpits also sometimes. Yeah, right. But right. what I'm yeah. saying is that for the most part, and I've, I've experienced this too, the majority of the time, is the person is incorrect. Yeah. The majority of the time. The person is incorrect because the spirit of offense has come in and he will make you see things. You're, you're spiritually blinded, mm -hmm. okay? And he'll make you see things in the wrong way. And just to, just to, to know that you'll be coming to church and you'll be sitting there and every, your heart is getting, it gets, getting so hard. You'll be sitting there and everything the leader is trying to feed you that pride and that offense mm -hmm. is bouncing off of you. Mm -hmm. You can't yeah. receive nothing. You can't receive. You can't receive because you, you just, mm -hmm. you, you bow, you're bound up. We're so glad that you tuned in to watch Kingdom View. And I want to leave this with you. If you have been offended, these are some steps that you can take to achieve your recovery. It's four steps. Number one, Recognize that you are hurt. Number two, confess your hurt to the Lord. Yes. Number three, be open to his correction and direction. And number four, finally, forgive the person who hurt you. Amen. 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 Those are Amen. some Amen. good steps for you to follow. Um, remember to stay submitted to God by not becoming offended. Right. You know, just you do, you, there's a place where you can get in your walk with God, where you're spiritually mature, where offense will just roll off you like water off the duck's back. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now it takes time to get there, but there is a place that it's a process, but. In the meantime, if you do use those steps, if you are offended, amen, I'm going to repeat them. Recognize that you are hurt. Confess your hurt to the Lord. Be open to his correction and direction. Finally, forgive the person who hurt you. Amen. Amen. Yes. amen. Glory amen. to God. Yes. Praise God. So. I have enjoyed this conversation today. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. And yes. hopefully someone is watching and if you're offended, you will be delivered by uh, watching this program and you can share it with someone else. Amen. 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 That's right. Yes. We want to also remind you, praise God, every Saturday we're here, every Saturday at 6 o'clock. And we love you and there's nothing that you can do about it. So please tune in for the, the Kingdom View. <laughs> Hi, I would like to invite you to our church, Worshippers Interceding for Excellence. We're located at 599 Hampstead Street in Scottsdale, Georgia. Our services are Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. for adult Bible study and children's ministry. Then we have our worship service at 11.30. And then on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock p.m., we have Bible study called Power for Living. And we would love you to come out. Come on out and be blessed. God bless you. God deserves none other.